Join us for MDS Inspire 2024 happening March 3rd through 5th in Las Vegas. An inspiring three-day event co-hosted with Carbon 6, filled with networking, new connections, and business growth. Why should you attend? We've got 20 plus expert speakers, three days of networking, and zero fluff. If you're in e-commerce, missing this event is a mistake because this is the only MDS event open to everyone. See you there. You need to come out as a viral product from day one. You need to commit. I do tell them that you got to commit. You got to make the jump. You got to go in the cold water. You can't just, you know, put your toe in and it's a pay to play guys. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the Million Dollar Sellers Podcast. I'm your host, Nick Chouquet. Today, we have Ian Page on the call. Ian Page is co-founder of Celico uh, and founder and CEO at Bullseye Sellers. Uh, stoked to have you on today, Ian. Thanks for uh, spending some time with us, man. Just as stoked to be here, Nick. Uh, so yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about launching today, right? Yeah, man. Launching is a big subject. <laughs> it's hard to put that in. It's hard to put that in 30 minutes, but uh, I'll, I'll give the highlights for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, obviously MDS members, uh, you know, have a good bit of knowledge when it comes to, to launching, but we're also going to have some, you know, maybe fresh Amazon sellers listening to this or some considering Amazon. Um, you know, why don't you start by just like, what does a launch mean to you? Like, how do you define a launch? How long should it last? What comes next? Uh, I define a launch as a product that goes from zero to six months. And what you do from day zero to that 60, 180 day is everything for the trajectory and life cycle of that product going forward. Is that product okay. going to do okay if the launch is messed up? Maybe, but... Will it do great if the launch is crushed? Much more likely. Right. Yeah. I think that's a great way to put it. I mean, the more effort and energy you put into planning your launch, then you know, you're just increasing the chances of it going well. Um, one thing that always comes to mind for me with launching is, is my background as a reseller, you know, and like all the terrible listings you would see just crushing it. Right. And I think that's it's more for me, I, I always explain that as being like, well, it's branded search, right? Like Amazon knows people want these products, so they're just going to show it to them. I mean, it doesn't matter if there is only one image and no bullet points, right? Um, so like, what does that mean to you? And how should a, a Amazon seller navigate that? Like maybe they have a reseller background and they know there's all these terrible listings out there crushing it. Like how do they juggle all that when looking at their competitive landscape? I'd say that gives people false expectations and because it's that's not the majority, right, Nick? Like the majority of the top sellers actually have good listings, not it's the minority, yeah. right? Um, let me put it this way. There's three aspects to a launch. There's three aspects to any product, actually. There's price, value, and quality. And you have to play one of those three or all three. And we know a lot of sellers in the last like seven years have really played the price game. Yeah. And I don't think for your MDS listeners, that's a game they want to play. And I don't think the value is a game they want to play. I think the game they want to play is quality. I think that's the game to play. It's like, yeah, your product's just superior. Okay. Um, so outside of that, what do you do? How do you compete with other listings that appear to be crushing it, that have a terrible listing or like they have like three images, one bullet point, their title is like, you know, 50 characters and you're like, how in the hell are they selling? Um, that is, um, should never be an expectation that you should have for yourself. I think the expectation you should have for yourself is what is the, what's the customer that you want to attract in creating a listing that is so um, talk to your customer, your ideal customer, and like just sells them on every aspect of the value proposition um, compare compares them. They like 
Oh, they're almost looking in the mirror. That's how your your listing yeah. needs to be. Like that customer feels so identified with your listing, and then we can talk about what we do after that. But I feel like having that listing so dialed in with the psychology of your ideal customer is like step zero in the foundation of a good launch. Yeah, yeah, and, and I really do like that because you get to hone in on like the the things that you mentioned the, those focus points of, of the launch is like price quality um well the third one you mentioned is slipping my mind right now the value i think um value but like yeah but you only really have so much real estate to play with right so much stuff to think about like if you think about the search result page of an amazon page right like you see the image you see the stars you see the rating you see the price Maybe there's going to be uh maybe you can get a red discount badge, you know, one of those things. Right. But I mean, dude, that's only five, six, seven things. You really got to think about dialing in on that first step of let's, let's call it the funnel, right? That search result page. Um, do you guys help or coach with any of that, that stuff? You know, it's kind of it's kind of become more of a thing for Sellico. Like we launched a launch coaching program because so many people are like, "Man, I've launched twelve products this year, and one of them did well. Eleven, and eleven of them are struggling, right? Or like, mm -hmm. um, I don't have enough bandwidth to to actually look at my launches every single day and make sure they're actually like hitting their milestones. So that is something we're offering now as launch coaching. But for the most part, no. Most of our clients are jumping on the dashboard and they're just setting up campaigns. And when they're MDS members, nine out of 10 times, they're pretty freaking smart and their listings yeah. are, are really good. Yeah. Yeah. What I was going to say is here's the thing is that Amazon's become more and more of a social media platform and they, they're more and more trying to get vir virality. Like they're more and more interested in virality than anything else. Um, I think it, it's confirmed by their latest update showing the sales volume right on the first page so that everyone can see 2,000, 5,000 sold, 10,000 sold. And what that does is it actually keeps those big players big and the small players small um, because that gives buyers more confidence knowing that 10,000 other people made that same decision. And that psychology is freaking enormous for conversion rate. So, yeah. It's just more confirming my theory of you need to come out as a viral product from day one. Yeah. Yeah. Amazon seems to be making it uh, more of a like pay, pay to play in the turn in the sense of like they want people who are going to come on their platform with like confidence that the product's going to sell. Not like maybe this Amazon thing will work. I'll send in 100 units and see what happens. Like with the new fee rollout that's coming next year, uh, you got to have four weeks of inventory or you're going to get charged a low inventory fee. Like, you know, it, it, it's changing, man. Like you really got to have your stuff together, your supply chain dialed in. And that's not easy. No, it's not easy, man. I, I do tell, Nick, I do tell a lot of people that are launching products. I do tell them like, you need to commit. I do tell them that you got to commit. You got to make the jump. You got to go in the cold water. You can't just, you know, put your toe in and test a product. That's the worst way to launch a product is just to put your toe in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you guys recommend? Uh, you know, if someone asks you how many units I should send in, um, you know, do you guys have a recommendation that, that you offer? I know like one day and two day shipping time, uh, you know, is becoming a big deal for conversion rate these days. And a lot of people are just sending in a lot more inventory than they usually would. Yeah. Um, I would say for a U.S. based product sourced in the U.S., I'd like to see a thousand units. If it's sourced in China, I'd like to see two to three thousand units. Okay. Nice. All right. Yeah. So that's some solid, some solid inventory to send in to get, to get launched. Um, and from what I hear, that's making making a big difference uh, for people doing launches recently is getting that inventory into Amazon and, you know, in brand analytics, you can see that first day and two day um, availability in there. That's right. Also, the FC transfers, right? You got you to right. have product across multiple states. So it's, yes. if, you, if you send in 200 units, how the hell are you going to get products in all these different locations? It's not right. Happen. Yeah. Good point. Good point. 
What are some other like characteristics of a successful launch that you guys see over at Celico besides, you know, sending in a lot of inventory, having a good listing? Is there anything that comes to mind? Number one is price outside of that. Okay. Let's dig into that pricing a little bit. What, what pricing strategies are you guys seeing working well? So you have to consider that you should probably be 25 to 40% lower than your peer. And I like to tell every client that comes aboard that I talk to that they need to have a North Star listing. And what that means is they have to have the guy they're chasing. You can't launch a product without having someone in front of you in the race that you want to catch up to and beat. You have to have one person. I don't want multiple. I just want one North Star for every launch because that's the guy you're going to compare price to. And that's the guy you're going to basically compare your entire sales velocity all the way up to the end. So okay. if he's at $25, you want to be 25 to 40% lower than him until your reviews are adequate. Okay. Okay. What about running PPC? I mean, are you guys uh, suggesting that people start with PPC right out the gate? No reviews. Um, obviously, it's better to, to have some reviews. Uh, what are you guys seeing working, not working? on that front when it comes to launches? We we don't see a successful launches without PPC, unfortunately. Um, that first 60 to 90 days, Amazon doesn't even know what the hell your product is. And indexing and keyword ranking are kickstarted by ads. So I don't see any way around that. Um, we keep ads simple. We keep them exact targeting campaigns. We just keep them in sponsored products. We're not messing around with sponsored brands or anything fancy. We're just doing like single keyword campaigns, maybe four or five, six of your main keywords and do a daily budget, $20, $30 a day and just keep it simple for the first like 30 days. Nice. Okay. What about some things that like will wreck a launch. I mean, is there anything like you could have a great listing, you know, you're doing, you're doing a lot of things right, but maybe there's just like this one thing that someone does wrong, um, throws the whole thing off. I mean, are you guys seeing anything like that that can really, um, you know, squash a launch? I would, I'd, I'd put it in three buckets. Uh, number one is inventory running out of inventory is, I don't even have to say that at this point. I think anybody, yeah who's been selling at Amazon longer than six months knows never run out of inventory. Um, number two is uh, starting off at the right price or wrong price for that matter. It's very similar to selling your house on real estate and putting your house up on Zillow or the MLS and overcharging for your house and no one comes and sees it. And then now you're backpedaling and trying to, you know, backpedal the whole time. So I think coming in at the wrong price is number two. And then obviously number three is, uh, I, I, I'm going to say there's four things. I'm adding another one. Number three is not not giving the product enough PPC. Um, okay. I see that too. I see people come in and they're, they're, they're like, oh, there's only 10 reviews. I'm not going to really put any ads there. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> it's a pay to play, guys. I'm sorry. Even if your ACOS sucks, you got to put the ads there. And then yeah. number four is, um, um, you know, one, one two-star reviews, obviously. Okay. Gotcha. Man, that's some solid, you know, just solid info, mainly because it's not complicated, right? Like it's, it's just not complicated, nope. right? So like, so if, if I'm, if I'm checking all the boxes and I'm doing everything, you know, Ian Page suggested I do, uh, I'm not meeting my North Star though, right? Like I'm not gaining that traction that I thought I would. Like, what are some troubleshooting steps that that you would go through? And what are some other things that might be going on with that other listing uh, that that keeps him ahead? Good, good question, man. Again, when you're looking at your listing, the reason why the North Star is so important to have all the time is that now you can compare. Data is only as valuable as it's comparable to other data. If I told you that... Apple stock was at $100 right now, but you had no other data to compare that to, you'd go, what does that mean? You have to right. have data to compare to data. So it's North Stars right here. He's selling 5,000 units a month at $39.99. Your product's right here. You're, you're catching up. You're, you're at like 800 units a month, okay? You know you have less reviews. He's got a shit ton more reviews. 
So there's always going to be a, a delta until your review count goes up. So you can't just you can't think you're not doing well if you're if you're slowly getting market share, you are doing well. You're not going to beat this guy right away. However, if you're stuck at five ten sales a day and you have a stagnant product launch, the first area you should check. Um, outside of continuing to look at him, the first area you should check would be your hero image. That'd be the number zero right when you get out of bed in the morning is what the hell can I do about my hero image? Yeah. Why isn't it winning? Okay. Assuming your price is right and you know, you've done all the other stuff. Yeah. Nice. So yeah, that's, that's a solid, solid advice there. What about, um, what if I feel good about my main image? Maybe I've even gotten some, you know, a third party to look at things. Um, you know, could, could there be something going on with another, with a competitor that, you know, I don't know about maybe, maybe it's against terms of service and, and they're doing things I'm simply not willing to do, or maybe I just don't even know about, um, is there a way that we can identify that information in in the competitive landscape yeah i mean it's not hard to find um i'm sure you guys have all looked you know looked at you know got the helium 10 review uh there's a great feature on helium 10 x-ray where you can look at their reviews and you can filter them yeah that's a lot better than just filtering on the listing and the first place to look is international that's where you want to look um, I tell people, if you want to see if people are cheating, look at their international. Okay. Okay. Because what happens is this is the big scam. This is the big scam right now is guys are buying listings that are from other marketplaces. Okay. So it's like a, it's like a DE listing or like mm -hmm. a Spain listing. Okay. And um, they're basically launching the same product in the U S but it's not the same product. Okay. Okay. Smart. <laughs> it's smart because <laughs> um, man if you can come in with a lot of reviews so i know it, it's always smart you got to respect the game you, you yeah got, you got to respect the game it's smart <laughs> yeah 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 you got to respect the game for sure i mean what what would you you know it's like what, what would you do at that point man like what do you what you do you decide to play that game too do you give up Right, you report them to Amazon. Nothing happens. Um, you know, it's it, it's like we want to play by the rules, but when you put a lot of money into something, um, you want to get that back. If you've already like sourced the product and you're at that point where you're like you're up to you're up to bat and you're like in the game, obviously you got to win. But if you yeah. if you're like looking at product research, it's probably a good idea before you go into that market to see how many guys have these international reviews that don't match. If you see like all the top guys have the same problem, you should probably stay out of that particular category or whatever that yeah. category is. But if it's too late, if it's too late, dumb dude, we got to win. Right. So yeah. I wouldn't play their game. Um, and I, what I would do is I would just, count on the fact that they're they're going to be a foregone conclusion at some point because their reviews are going to go down they're probably selling yeah. a crappy product and i would just yep. sell a superior product with much much higher quality and really just make it an incredibly good listing yeah i like that man yeah i think i, I was going to come back to where you just where you just ended is like if you have that good product you know your market um, you just kind of got to be patient. Now, maybe there are some other things you could do. Maybe you throw some money into like a, you know, a TikTok campaign or a Google ad campaign where you can get some external traffic that's going to convert, um, well also, and, and, you know, you can, you can beat them that way. Um, and like you said, you know, your reviews are going to stick. His eventually are going to go away. Um, you know, Am Amazon usually catches up at some point um, to, to what people are doing. They're usually on to doing something else by then. But, you know, Amazon's always catching up. Um, so, yeah, I think that that's good news that, you know, the listeners need to hear is like, hey, just be patient, man, and, and uh, trust the process, basically. Um, I think this is all a lot of good info, um, you know, mainly like for resellers. 
right? Like resellers that come into private label don't understand the concept of a launch, really. They don't understand how to price competitively. They don't understand the importance of a main image. They don't understand the importance of staying in stock, right? Because they're not, they're not really worried. In the wholesale world, it's, it's really more about, do you're really just finding different products. Um, and, and you, hopefully you find a couple of replans, but there's not, there's not a lot of good ones out there. Um, so I think this has been a great episode, like for, if you're a reseller thinking about getting into private label, like all this stuff that Ian just mentioned, like, yes, it's, it's simple, but you have to have confidence. You've got to have the money to put into it. Uh, and you've got to have the grit to stick with it because it's a different type of, uh, of fight you know, as a private label seller. Do you encounter that? Like, uh, do you, do you, have you worked with them? Dude, all the time. It honestly, wholesalers coming into FBA is, um, it's tough to get these guys, old dogs, new tricks because they're so into just buy box games and trying to get, they're basically just bidding on products. Like there's, there's no Amazon yeah. skill set. I'm not saying they're not skilled. Their skill set is finding products at the right price. That's the skill. Yeah. Okay? So private label is not finding products at the right price. Private label is you basically have to understand the psychology of the customer marketing. Uh, you have to understand the algorithm of ranking. You have to understand paid ads. You have to understand uh, imagery. Uh, you have to understand um, all the different keyword components that go into ranking it, it's kind of a much bigger book of understanding, like a tome versus, hey, get the product at the right price, put the ASIN in and win the buy box. Right. Yeah. 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 So if you're a reseller thinking about making that switch or, or just getting into it, um, <laughs> you know, you definitely want to make sure you're you're prepared for the battle. Um, I, I don't know, if, Ian, if you guys have any 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 tools or offer any like consulting on that front i think brandon young does a really good job of showing you like how to prepare for a launch how much money it's going to cost and stuff like that yeah brandon's good at that that's not my lane bullseye sellers which is my agency we really want people to come in that already have products we already have a store we want to take their million dollar store to 10 that's our, yeah. you know, that's where we can feel like we can add the most value. Um, those guys that are like starting from zero, not, I do understand how to help them, but not an area that I'm really offering services for at the moment. Right. Okay. Okay. The biggest tip I have too, outside of that is that you don't have to be breaking TOS or going gray hat or definitely not black hat in order to do a launch. It's kind of this weird connection with like launch equals rank equals black hat. And it's just not true. You can, right. the, the common denominator of what a launch is supposed to do for you is actually have controlled external traffic that is improving the SEO of the product. Is Does that have to be against TOS? No. You can accomplish that through uh, Google ads. You can accomplish it through influencers. You can accomplish it through an email list. You can accomplish it also through Celica. We have a very cool uh, TOS compliant program called Go Find It, where we actually create a viral launch for you and actually offer the product at a discount using promo codes. There's no rebates. There's nothing shady. And it works great. So I just want people to know, like, they don't have to be like, oh, shit, launch equals rebate equals TOS. You know, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to run PPC. Right. Yeah, I think that's a good point, man. Like there's a way to 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 fight back, so to say, if if your competitors are doing something that seems out of line. Um, there's plenty of things you can do within terms of service. Um, maybe there's yeah, you know, like you said, Celico has that program they're offering, but I mean just talking to people, just building a little campaign and you know, maybe if you're selling a nutritional supplement, like go to your local gym. Hey, can I set up a booth? You know, my company just rolled out a new product. Uh, we want to give out some free samples, offer uh, your customers here a deal uh, if they want to buy something, right? And bam, you know, you could have, you know, how many people go through a gym every day, right? Hundreds. So now you've got the opportunity to capture that foot traffic 
um, get them looking for your product on Amazon, uh, and and you've done nothing against terms of service. Um, so I think those types of old school strategies um, work very well. They probably, you know, it, it's harder to scale, right? But the the impact of that um, can be pretty significant uh, as well. Cause now you're building relationships, you're building brand awareness. Um, and you're still getting that benefit of that search on Amazon that you want. That's what I've always thought about doing with the, uh, when I was in to supplements more, um, and I had some bad launches, I was like, man, I should just post up at the gym with a little booth and like show off what I got or something. But I think there's a lot of opportunity if, if e-commerce sellers leverage retail a little bit in these kind of unique ways. 100%, man. I think I think at the end of the day you you're, you're a business owner and you have to you have to be scrappy and you got to be willing to do yeah. whatever it's going to take and just because you're trying to look for a quick buck on e-commerce doesn't change the fact that you still have to hustle. There's no difference. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, Ian, thanks for coming on, man, and and sharing, uh, you know, a little bit about launches and and you know, sharing information that's good for both MDS sellers, but also some people looking to get into private label. Um, you know, maybe you're a reseller, maybe you're just looking to to start up something new. Um, now you've got a pretty good idea of of what it takes to get something off the ground. Um, and and you know, if you need some help, reach out to Celico. Um, sounds like they've got some great programs to, to get things off the ground pretty easily. Very easily, a lot easier than, than, you know, trying to call your, your auntie and your grandma, it's, you know, (laughs) not as scalable. So we have programs where we have, we have like real Amazon prime buyers that actually want to purchase your product and in exchange for a discount, they will go and purchase it on a controlled schedule. Um, and you could like, I could, we could create private drip campaigns of 60 day purchases right to your listing. And that, that's what Amazon wants to see. They want to see traffic and purchases and we can create that traffic in those purchases and they're real. They're not against TOS. So it's, uh, we have some awesome programs, but before I leave, I have to give, I have to give, uh, two things. I got to give a shout out to MDS, which I'm going to do really in a second, just to show my love. And then number two, um, I want to, I want to, I want to let you guys in on a new thing that, that we're working on at Celico. So, um, I'll start with the new Celico feature that we're working on. That's coming out in Q1. Cause I, I just want to create some buzz. Basically what we're doing is we're going to be starting to work with brand owners prior to launch. So we want to be involved in, in your product research process. And we want to help you avoid launching a dud or a product that has enough flaws to it that would kill the product no matter how good of a launch you do. So the way we're doing that is we're going to have the first ever uh, product focus group service where you can actually send product prior to buying a lot of inventory to as little as five people or as high as 100 people. And they will be required to actually rigorously test your product under your dis- your your uh, direction, what you want them to do, whether it's take it every morning, put it on their face, feed it to their dog, kill, kill the rats, whatever the purpose of the product is, they're going to actually test it rigorously for, you know, two, three, four weeks. And then they're going to report back with a very thorough survey on your product, including your packaging, durability price point quality then they're going to also be able to compare your new product with existing competitors and give you their feedback um and nice. then follow that up with a, with a google meet call if you want to have a conversation with your product tester nice man I, I like that a lot i mean what a great way to supplement like you know using intellivy or PicFu. um i mean that's just such a great thing to add on yeah because it's the product itself. We're not, we're not giving you feedback on the images. We're doing it before it even goes to market. Yeah. Nice. And when you said that's coming out next year, so Q1? that's one thing that's coming out in Q1 and cool. 
Yeah, yeah, it's coming out in Q1. We're building it now. And I also just wanted to give a shout out to MDS. It's the best mastermind group in the world. I mean, I, I know of a lot of mastermind groups and no one does no one does it better than MDS. No one's got better quality people, in my opinion, than MDS in the Amazon community. And uh, no one puts on a better event than the MDS. So I love you guys and I'm just happy to be part of this community. Yeah, man. Well, we're we're glad to have you. And um, are are you gonna are we gonna see you at any events here uh, coming up? I got my bathing suit packed up. I'm coming to the yeah. hot day in Miami. Amazing, nice, man. I'll see you there. I'll be there. And then we've got uh, Inspire coming up in March, man. That was a great event last year. I think we saw you there, right? Because you were at Prosper. Yeah, but this year we're actually gonna be much more there. Cool. All right. Awesome, man. We're looking yeah. forward to it. Looking forward to uh, the Yacht Day. And I think we're going to do our official launch for our focus group service at Inspire. I think that's where we're going to kick off and make make this new thing live. So I'm pushing to get nice. that done by Inspire. All right, man. Well, I'll be looking forward to that. That sounds like a great thing. That sounds like a really good event to kick it off at um, just because of like how a lot of networking that goes on um at, at that one so i just uh totally i see i see a lot of people chatting about that and, and leveraging it honestly it's a good one and it's not out there <laughs> uh so kudos to you for coming up with a good service man that's gonna be a great add-on well now not, now i gotta put my money where my mouth is but i will yeah i'll make it great yeah we'll be ready for it man well ian again thank you for coming on man looking forward to seeing you in miami uh and getting you back on the podcast again soon all right brother thank you